Hey everyone, welcome back to the video uh, series on hand calculations. Today I'm going to do the first example problem using the PDD formalism. So we can start with the problem statement. So please take a minute to read through the problem statement on your own and uh, just pause your video and read through it. So I typically like to start these problems by writing down some parameters. So we are given the reference dose and the MU setting, but by themselves, that doesn't really tell us anything about the dose. The monitor unit doesn't really tell us anything about dose unless we know the reference conditions, which we are given to be 100 centimeter SSD, depth of D max, and a 10 by 10 field. So we know, we know that the LINAC is giving one centigrade per MU in those conditions. And we also are given that the collimator field size is 10 by 15, and the depth of the calculation is 10 centimeters. We are also told the beam energy of 6x and that the setup SSD is 100, which is the same as the reference conditions. So there's no need to convert our PDD value to a separate SSD because we are at the same SSD as the reference conditions. Also note that our field size is not square, it's rectangular. So we need to calculate an equivalent square field size using the 4a over p, and that calculation is shown here and it gives us a collimator equivalent square field size of 12 centimeters, which is what we will use in our calculations. So now we can go ahead and put it all into equation form, and that's what you see here. On the top is just the generic dose calculation equation with all of the factors that we don't need omitted, so we don't have a wedge factor or tray factor here because there's no wedge or tray. And then on the bottom, I just input the correct value for the SSD, the field size at the surface, the depth, the collimator field size, and the phantom scatter field size, which in this case is the same as the collimator field size because uh, the field size at the ISO center was actually used to define the normalization point of the PDD in this case, so we don't need to uh, use different field sizes for the collimator and phantom scatter factors here. And I always find it extremely helpful to kind of draw out how we are perturbing our reference condition. So that's what I'm doing here. On the left, we have our reference condition. We're told that uh, the LINAC was calibrated at 100 centimeter SSD at a depth of D max for a field size of 10 by 10. And when we apply a collimator and phantom scatter factor to that geometry, uh, we are just increasing our field size. And that's what you see there uh, in the middle. Uh, so we have the same SSD, but our field size is now changing and we're still at the same depth. And now we can visualize what we're doing with our PDD term. So with the PDD at 100 centimeter SSD, field size of 12 and depth of 10, we are now moving that calculation point deeper in the phantom. So we are moving from our uh, depth of D max of 1.5 where the PDD is normalized to, and we are moving down to the 10 centimeter depth, which is what our uh, problem asks for. It wants the dose at a 10 centimeter depth. So that's what we do with the PDD term. And this is just kind of nice to visualize, you know, what we're doing with each of these terms and how our reference, reference geometry is actually changing. Now we can actually move and look at our beam data. So this is a PDD table. We just go across the top and find our field size of 12. And then we go down, uh, down the rows and find our depth of 10. And we see where those, that row and that column intersect and it's 67.6 there. Then we can do the same thing for our collimator and phantom scatter factors. We get our equivalent square field size and uh, take those values, and then we can plug them into the equation, multiply everything out, and we get a dose value of 68.6. Also notice that the PDD value is given as 67.6, but when we use it in our equation, we actually want the relative value. So we just divide it by 100, uh, and that's what we actually use in our dose calculation equation. This was a relatively straightforward example. Uh, there's nothing really funny going on here, um, but we will get into some more complex examples in the following videos.